But what's happening close to home? What's happening across the ditch? Well, um, I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, if you like, a pair of mine. Uh, someone who I've had the opportunity to work closely with over the last few years. Someone who I've uh, got a lot of respect for, who's fighting a pretty tough battle uh, in Australia where there's different things happening in different states. It's a very challenging market over there. And we'd like to ask for an update, please, from Fiona Patton. Thank you very much. Great. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, this morning, I actually went out to look for a I Love New Zealand t-shirt because I thought that's what I'd wear today. But you guys are even too cool to have t-shirts like that here. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, again, like, like um, Ethan, I don't think I'm going to be talking about any particularly good news coming out of Australia. Um, we... Um, we actually, I am going to start a campaign to see if New Zealand will adopt us. Um, really, you guys are so progressive. Um, you're beating us at everything, even some of the sport you're beating us at. And when we got marriage, when you guys got marriage equality up, that's what we were campaigning. You're going to let New Zealand beat us on this as well. So I think that's going to be part of my campaign for um, for Australia. Basically, I, I represent the industry that sells these products in Australia. Um, we were born out of the Eros Association, which was born from the adult industry. So we represent the adult stores, and now we represent tobacconists and some of the and, and other sort of stores, the Happy Herb types of stores that that supply these new emerging psychoactives. I also have the pleasure to be the leader of a very new political party called the Australian Sex Party. And um, thank you, yeah. We came fifth in the last election um, and we ran on a sex, drugs and rock and roll kind of platform. Uh, very much drug law reform and, and obviously, you know, joined with, with other drug law reform parties. I mean, Greg Chip here is from the drug law reform party. We had a number of parties and you know, so there's a lot of reformers in there. We've got Dr. Alex Wodak here in the audience as well, who has been on the forefront of pushing for logical, sensible, evidence-driven reform. Unfortunately, that's not where Australia seems to go. Um, we don't follow evidence, we follow tabloids. And we have done that. So with adult stores starting to sell these products in the sort of mid-2000s, I suppose, and this was interesting. I mean, it, I blame the internet. Um, we blame the internet for everything in Australia, or, you know, whatever it might be. But it was when um, the internet started eating in on the porn market. So the adult stores were looking for other products to supply. And, you know, they went for the fake Viagras for a while. Um, they even did fireworks for a while, and that was fantastic. Canberra was like the porn and pyrotechnic capital of Australia. Um, unfortunately, we banned fireworks um, shortly after that. Um, talk about a nanny state. And so we saw this decline, and also, interestingly, I mean, tobacconists were seeing a decline because, lo and behold, that regulated drug was in decline. Uh, so they were looking for alternative products to stock. Uh, but in 2011, the prohibition laws began on these emerging sub, uh, substances. Interestingly, it wasn't from our usual prohibitionists. You know, we didn't have the good Reverend Fred Nile and the good reverends and the good prohibitionists out there campaigning for this. It was the mining companies. You know, the mining boom has a lot to answer for in Australia and some of it is the introduction of these laws. It was the mining companies that were saying, you know what, our, our workers are trying these substances. Because we have such heavy testing for marijuana that it means that someone on a seven day on, seven day off shift, if they have a joint during their seven days off, it'll show up on their, on their test, on their workplace testing, and they won't be able to work and we'll, have, and we'll fire them. So a lot of those employees were using the, the new alternatives um, to not to not to work high, but to be able to enjoy uh, a, another form of relaxation through these products and not get fired for it when they went back to work seven, four or five days later. So, but the mining council said, no, this is too hard. We can't have this. 
You know, we regularly... So in some, like, bizarre, illogical way, they said, can you please ban these so we can regulate it better? Because if they're illegal, then we can regulate them better. Like, I, I have no idea how this, this works. And they also said, and we can use it in our, our enforcement the way we enforce alcohol. Hello, alcohol, it's legal. And which is why we can regulate it. So this flawed logic has continued on. And WA, West Australia, was the first to go down this path, um, mainly because the mining companies told them to. You know, the WA government is practically owned by the mining companies. They then went down this path. We need a national approach in Australia. We didn't have a kind of a body for this in Australia. So they turned to the Therapeutic Goods Administration, which manages our, our medicines. Um, they said, but it's not therapeutic. And we said, well, we weren't actually making that claim. And, you know, maybe they are. But nonetheless, it's not therapeutic. So we're going to ban it because it's not therapeutic. Um, it was certainly completely the wrong way. So in the past three years, we've had over 30 laws introduced into Australia, state and federal. Um, but still, every day in every state, these substances are being sold. So these laws have not worked, nor will they work. They we even went so far as to ban names. So some bright, fair trading minister went, I know how we're going to stop this. We're just going to ban the name. You, you keep selling chronic, well, we're going to ban chronic. You can't sell anything called chronic. Um, look, I don't know if anyone from his office is in here, but guess what? We actually took the packaging off with that name and we put another packet on it with a different name. <laughs> <laughs> so now they're going to go for even broader legislation. And Queensland is sort of Queensland got Queensland got the ball rolling. They said um, if a product is chemically similar to a banned product or it's pharmacologically similar to a banned product or it's intended to be or if you're pretending to intend that this product might be good and might have some fun consequences, then it's banned. So to overcome any evidentiary di difficulties, they just said, look, if, that, if you took that bit of um, Damiana because you thought it was going to make you feel good, well, then it's illegal for you to take that, be in possession of that Damiana. Um, they did also, in this process of, of doing the, the chemical structure, they also banned the products in ch that we use to make cheese. Uh, they also banned avocado, and echinacea is now a dangerous drug in Queensland. Uh, the Queensland Members of Parliament were very sensible in their approach to this. They said, well, if it walks like a duck, then it's a drug, obviously. Uh, this did actually backfire when they um, raided one of our stores, one of our members' stores, and seized um, the very dangerous Himalayan pink salt. Um, they seized quite a quantity of it. They subsequently returned it with $40,000 worth of compensation as well. Uh, New South Wales then went down. Um, I just read today, actually, the New South Wales government who said, not only are we going to ban all these things, we are going to name and shame anyone found selling these substances. Um, <laughs> so they said, OK, if it's got a significant psychoactive effect, it's banned unless it's alcohol. <laughs> so we're not quite sure what that means uh, about a significant psychoactive effect. We know that it's not alcohol, so we're still selling various products in there. Um, they, again, they went through this notion of also collect analogues of any product, any banned substance. Um, so they actually banned a large number of the plants growing in Parliament House. So the whole garden around New South Wales Parliament is actually a dangerous drug, which may explain some of the decisions they've been making. Um, they did do an inquiry into this. 
Uh, they had eight, 21 submissions, 18 said don't prohibit it, it won't work, you need to regulate. So they ignored all of those of course. Um, they, yeah, so now they've actually banned our national flower, the wattle, in New South Wales. Victoria, I'll be quite quick on this one. Victoria was the last state and we just had that go through a few weeks ago. They thought they'd not knocked it on the head. They, they brought in, I'm not a chemist, so they brought in a whole bunch of stuff I didn't understand about hydrogen atoms and two rings. If you change more than two rings or up to two rings and um, anyway, I understand that the first product that bypasses that legislation will be out next week. So... There was a bit of a run on actual marijuana in Victoria um, for a week or so uh, while we brought into the new substances. Um, so none of these have worked. Over 30 laws. What's really interesting in this is over 30 laws, and it was interesting listening to the New Zealand police. You know, they've had 13 convictions. Well, we haven't. We haven't had any. Uh, we have, I, I, I correct myself there. We have had some convictions, but only when people plead guilty. When we've had people defending their cases, um, you know, there's been certain cases, I think it was a case last year, where the police had to quietly return 100 kilos of a product. Um, other cases where they've just been thrown out of court. So 30 laws, three years, banning everything from cheese. Oh, that's the other good point of Victoria. They banned tobacco. And we wrote to them and said, you know you've banned tobacco. And they said, yeah, we do, but it won't matter, like, because that doesn't count. It's not like the drug law would over, would over, the Drugs Act would override something like the Food Act or the, the Tobacco Act. We've had a different opinion on that. And they said, and I think it's up there on that letter, but I'll just see if I've got it here. Um, he goes on to say that um, it's intended to capture dangerous drugs, not tobacco. Um, <laughs> And drugs that are not let yet listed as a drug of dependence, a drug of dependence, well, not tobacco, um, and that may be listed in the future. I actually foresee a time when tobacco is listed as a dangerous drug. I think I may even see that in my lifetime, um, but obviously not to the minister. So we've done all of this. Our laws aren't working. We're terribly jealous of New Zealand. Um, and, you know, coming from an Australian, I don't say that very lightly. Um, but in the meantime, the industry has taken it into its own hands. So we've got this grey industry. And we've introduced what we like to call grey regulation. Uh, we have introduced a hologram system. So when a product comes onto the market, the Eros Association gets the lab reports. We can confirm that those lab reports are true. We can confirm that the product is what it says it is. Um, and we can put a, a sticker on that. We've worked with the police on this. They are in favour of this. It has enabled us to recall products. Um, when we had a, an incident where there was a couple of hospitalisations from a product, we were able to recall that product immediately and put a note out. When the law changed in Victoria, again, we were able to recall those products. Um, now, I'm a constant optimist, um, which is probably why I'm standing here today. Um, but, you know, now that we've banned cheese, tobacco, avocados, I mean, we've even banned our fucking national flower. Um, <laughs> why am I still an optimist? But I see what we're happening here. I see that we're creating, a, we will continue in a grey market. I come from the porn industry. Porn is illegal in Australia. We sell 13 million of the films every year. Um, and we pay tax. And if I'm really, really optimistic, I hope that one day I will be one of the first politicians to be able to say in Australia, I inhaled and I really enjoyed it. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> wow, 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 there it is. Um, yeah, tobacco killed 4,000 people in New Zealand last year. Yeah, amazing. Cannabis was zero. And the year before that, zero.